Alright, so we've been talking extensively about this Kevin Smith character, right? The biggest thing out of Jamaica for 2021 and now we are in 2022. And we're laying this to rest by finalizing all the stuff that's been put out by him in the findings through investigation. So if you want to know what his salary was, he raked in about $1 million per week. That's $1 million in Jamaican money and he raked in probably more than that, but that is what they could account for. That is what they found paperwork on. And we're going to explain to you how he made all his money, the things he did. This won't be a long video at all. Stick around. So Kevin Smith kept daily tabs on his flock, contributions to his multi-million dollar empire, with daily reports on collections and expenditures, and personally contacted members of their, if their life insurance policies under his management were in arrears. That means if you're late on the payment, for your life insurance policy, it could cancel the life insurance policy. So he would check up on all of their life insurance policies to make sure everybody is paying. And if they weren't, he would contact them and say, hello, you need to pay an installment on the life insurance policy so the policy does not cancel. Now I'll remind you, he is the main beneficiary of these life insurance policies. That's kind of dangerous because when you give somebody like that, your, uh, like they are the beneficiary of your life insurance policy how do you know that this person won't set you up to get you killed somewhere and then collect on your life insurance policy but anyhow how he made his money the documents offer a glimpse into a now deceased leader on the pathways international kingdom restoration ministries juggled his various operations sometimes spending more than five hundred thousand dollars in a single day to maintain at least five properties now among the monthly expenses were jamaica public service jps jamaica national water commission and flow for bills for properties at the palms at richmond in saint anne the gemstone estate villa at hartfield meadows in coral gardens saint james his dorchester drive home in ironshore montego bay the 14 the 144 albion road church based in the second city as well multiple properties he had in addition our news team saw payments of harkai security for his four-star villa and payments and account information for insurance policies with the jamaica money market brokers jmmb and sagicor including coverage for his home so i did have insurance buy up on all these things land taxes for four of the five properties including the church's location totaled three hundred and eighty six thousand seven hundred and ninety thousand dollars three hundred and eighty six thousand seven hundred and ninety dollars is what he owed according to a april 14th 2021 entry now remember his stuff didn't happen until november where all hell broke loose in the church and him end up dead and all this so this is from april 14th of 2021 a breakdown showed sixty nine thousand four hundred dollars for gemstone estate twenty two twenty two hundred and thirty three thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars for the dorchester drive home sixty one thousand one hundred and twenty four a dunbar pay property and twenty two thousand three hundred and fifty for the four million property he leased to build pathways international boy i've been annoying 
A source close to the Albion Road property told the Sunday Gleaner that Smith had reached a deal to acquire the land with payments to be made in installments. I guess the land was sold for $4 million to him, right? Smith was reportedly close to completing the payments because he was making his monthly installment. He was close to completing the payment so he would be in full ownership of the land but he stopped meeting his monthly obligations and he was more focused on acquiring more properties. Prior to Smith's death, the property owner reportedly pleaded with him to please complete the deal but he said that the bishop refused. Now while it appears that the property will remain in the hands of the current owner, he is reportedly anxious to rid it of himself like give it away quickly to somebody for cheap little and nothing him don't want it gemstone estate is listed on several popular international travel and accommodation sites and although some sites noted that the rooms are available at gemstone estates starting at 497 dollars per night we're talking about us dollars here per night other indicates that they were not facilitating bookings on the location currently. A Google search notation said that the villa has been permanently closed. The Sunday Gleaner, when they did their investigations, they were unable to confirm the true statute of the operation. A cloud of mystery surrounds Smith's empire following his death a fortnight ago in a motor vehicle accident in St. Catherine as he was being escorted by the police to Kingston to be slapped with murder and firearm related charges. Now Smith had presided over a deadly October 17th ritual which we all know about now, right? In that ritual where Tanika Gardner had lost her life um, and 38 year old Michael Scott who people really don't speak about Michael, they were reportedly murdered there. A third person, which is an 18-year-old Kevon Plummer, was shot dead when he attacked the cops with a machete or a machete as they entered the church to bring the bloody mayhem to an end. Now, Andre Ruddock, who is currently before the courts, has reportedly confessed to slashing Garner's throat. Andre is one that was labeled as the archangel he was supposed to be smith's archangel his right hand one andre ruddock appeared in the pathway documents at various times they found him in the paperwork with an april 6 2021 entry for example noting that he was given three thousand one hundred and fifty dollars to purchase diazine to treat lumber on the farm also appearing among the documents is a Tanika Gardner who purchased seaweed on at least two occasions. One Kevon Plummer surfaced on March 29th in the papers where he was said to be given $5,000 to buy a case of Lucasade for Smith's household. Several other persons appeared on payroll documents including kitchen staff who were paid $2,000 daily, laundry personnel earning $1.071.43 per day, uh, I guess that's $1.43 a day, and laborers earned about $2,000 per day. Other expenses for repairs to air conditioning units, pool maintenance, and other upkeeps were also documented. He was a man that was about his finances down to the detail. For those of you who tune into the Morning Thoughts show, you probably heard us go over this before, but this is supposed to be the shorter version instead of an hour and a half show where you have to dig through to find 10, 15 minutes of information, right? So stick with it, it'll be over soon. So members of Path Friends, Covenant Seeds, or other special contributions as requested by Smith. So they had about six, seven different things they had to pay into, which all funneled right back to his pocket. Chop in. Membership cards also came at a cost, with adults and children paying $500 for their membership card and $100 respectively for the children, while widows were charged $200. 
there were more the more one gives the more god gets happy is what, this is this is what he used to tell his audience that the more one gives is the more god gets happy and everybody wanted to make god happy one church member told the sunday gleaner in defense of the numerous payments they would make the leader would help a lot of people in need you know but nobody is talking about that still and we've heard that before that he made sure that you know there wasn't one of those churches where you go to his church and you give your tithes and offering but when you go home your light bill was overdue and jps cut off your light and now you're sitting in darkness or trying to light a lamp or candles he wasn't that he actually took care of them which is a part of why they were suckered in because although they were giving he was given back to them in some way when they were in desperate need but most of them didn't used to go for to him like that for everything so they believed that the little that he did for them was actually the goodness of his heart when in fact it was a part of his mechanism to trap them and not only that it made them feel secured it made them feel like he was somebody they could trust because he really cared about them when all along all it was was to keep them connected so they could keep giving to him big story short long story short he was actually using their money that they had given to him to help them when they were in their desperate times of need now although it was not clear from the records how smith allocated donations to members of his flock a line item indicating care packages with purchases of up to a hundred loaves of bread at a time was seen members were also encouraged to donate food items clothing and various supplies towards outreach programs and the times documented so i guess he would have like a grocery store or something in the ark from stuff that was donated by others and then if you come and you say pastor i mean i have no food i mean also no times rough right now and these things he would probably fill a couple of boxes from the pantry and give them some groceries out of but all that was donated for free smith also lent money to members of an interest rate of 15 percent so he was having his own lending services and he began to explore the idea of establishing an informal lending business the church also operated a farm which had poultry lots of goats lots of chicken and lots of rabbits and lots of cows weekly purchases of feed for the animals were also accounted for in the documents while eggs were also sold to the local uh, market and to members smith also made a foray into beekeeping with a february 2nd entry showing money being paid to a bee farmer of a St. James address to provide two B boxes and 12 frames at a cost of $28,000, including $9,000 for labor and $4,000 for transportation. Special events such as Jamaica Day hosted on Friday, February 26th annually also pulled in a lot of cash. Church members were invited to enjoy various Jamaican dishes and charged $200 for entry if they were dressed in the national colors and $500 for those who were not dressed in the national colors. All proceeds were said to be in aid of the church building fund. Notes also indicate that some members had not settled their bills from the church harvest with their names, the amount that they owed and their contact number were found in the documents. <laughs> So, if you're late on your payment or you haven't thrown your tithes and offerings, he would write it down in the book, along with your contact number and how much you owed. So, even if you gave a little bit, he's not going to forget that you didn't pay all of it. Pathway International Kingdom Restoration Ministries is a subsidiary of Pathway International Foundation Limited, which is registered as a charity organization with the company's office of Jamaica. Smith and Daphne Freighter, a nurse of a London address, are named as shareholders. Hmm. Members of the clergy, listen up, members of the clergy in Western Jamaica have distanced themselves from Smith's religious practices, 
Most of them have claimed that they were not even aware that his church was in the parish. Big, boldface lie. Smith told DVD recordings he sold DVD recordings of his Sunday morning services, Sunday night services, Monday night services, and the Wednesday night services. And a cost of each one of these DVDs were $200. He was a proper businessman. Church members could also purchase copies of Family Training Hour and Friday night prophetic services. So while the pandemic was raging and Andrew Holness said, no church now nah keep, he designed a way to be able to make money pulling his tithes and offering. He would probably like demand that his members of his congregation, since we cannot gather in person, you will purchase a DVD copy of each one of these services each week. Each service DVD was $200 and you had the Sunday service and then you had the Sunday night service and then you had the Monday night service and the Wednesday night service. So those are four DVDs come out per week and each one costs $200. So that's $800 a week from each individual while the pandemic was going on. So while these other pastors were like, oh my God, we need to get back to church. And a lot of us were saying, yeah, because you, you, you're losing money now, pastor. You can't get your tithes and offerings. Can't pass around your collection plate. Smith was ahead of that. He already thought about how to get the service to them instead of just demanding that they still remember to pay tithes and offerings even though no church now gone, which is what some pastors actually resorted to. So they themselves were probably a bit envious of this man's genius to be able to chop out a good grand out of everybody every week for, for the entire time of the pandemic without going to church. A former congregant had previously told the newsroom at the Gleaner that the weekly services and consultation sessions pulled in another $1 million per week. That is by itself. He was already making a million dollars per week. And this right here pulled in another million per week. So now it's not even clear how many millions he made per week. Just know that he was making a lot of millions per week, right? Chopping. That's his money. That's where it went. There are comments over here. I will only read through a couple of them. There's one person whose name is The Truth, and The Truth said no difference than the rest of the scammers. He was doing exactly what they did. John H. Christian says, just put Jesus in the mix and you can rob from those who are barely existing financially. Difficult to show sympathy for folks who will not think for themselves. And somebody else says, it is also stupid to support those who think that their wealth, their family name, or their skin color can be used to purchase salvation. Jam Downer says that Kevin Smith is gone to hell and I hope he is no longer a threat to society. We now have to pay attention to the hundreds of other little Kevin Smiths that are running around in Jamaica. They managed to stay under the radar because the throat slashing hasn't started as yet. Sing him Ali. Oh yes, they're the musicians from the 12 tribes of Israel. You don't understand. I am sent to confirm who they are. You have rejected your own people, your musicians, because you did not understand. But now you have been called back. You are alive into the kingdom for such a time as this. Here are the Israelites. The Lord thy God is one. Son, Matafale, Prince, Far the First, Tuchu, Pantan! Tuchu, Pantan! In Mark Mali, Damian Mali, Kimani Mali, Stephen Mali, Julian Mahi, they were the prophetic people who saw 
what you couldn't see, for you are comfortable asleep. But I've been sent to the convergence. Awake, listen. If you return to the merchants' places at this time, when the bridegroom tarries, you will go into the merchant cities, but you must take their mark when you return from them to get oil for your lamp. You will not be able to enter into the kingdom. Stephen Marley, Julian Marley, these turn into the kingdom. Julian Marley, these royal prophets came singing as musicians, singers, leaning with the prophetic eye. But my people, you were comfortable in your slave master's house. Rita Marley, Rowan Marley, Milton, Nascimento, Josh Sucker, Lincoln Thompson, Cedric Knighton, Ross Michael, Caesar, Caesar, Caesar. Moses, Wadada, Leo Smith, Jack Yor, he gonna get cure. Anthony B, these are the singers of the kingdom on a higher frequency and the awakened trying to make the noise to wake you up and you are still sleeping. Wake Hebrew Israelites from your sleep of 400 years. Sleeping beauty, get up! Muta Baruka Augustus Pablo and Son. He goes on. Capleton Fireman Fireman Everyone Jeremiah said Soldiers of John to the Lunes Iron Bushman. Juna Kelly, Kurt Greylux, Juna Reed, Dennis Brown, Barrington Levy, Yellowman, Gentleman, Don Carlos, Michael Prophet, Larry Marshall, Jacob Miller, Nicodemus, Inika Muzi, Michael Ross, Juna Marvin, Sugar Minot, Kia Patan, Queen Africa. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about this one. And I'll catch you on the next video. It's SoFlow TV. End to a chapter. I'm out. Peace.